It's time for another breathtaking, heart-stopping, adventurous video for Cinema M119, and today we're rocking Chapter 1, Section 3, Average and Relative Rates O Change. So let me tell you how this is going down. I have a particular hobby, and my hobby is to pay good money to see ballerina dinosaurs. Now, this may seem a little weird to you, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you not to judge to each their own, and this is what I like to do with my free time and my hard-earned cash. So, the question on my mind is, how much money do I have to pay for a certain number of ballerina dinosaurs? And then, what is the average rate of change that I get for money to dinosaurs? So what I mean is, how much more money do I have to put in to get more dinos? Well, let's figure out a little chart. Let's suppose we have a function where if my x values, my input, are going to be dollars paid, then I want my y values to be number of ballerina dinos. And so maybe I have a function f of x that gives me these y values. And maybe I've got more than that. Maybe I even have a table where I've kept track of how much money I've paid for the certain number of ballerina dinosaurs that I've gotten over the many years. And so maybe I pay $10 for three ballerina dinosaurs, or I'll pay $20, and then I can get five, or I'll pay $30, and then I'll get eight, or I'll pay $40, and I'll get 10, or I'll pay $50, and then I'll get 11. And so maybe I want to know what the sweet spot is, right? Like maybe I want to know the best bang for my buck or the best way to get the most dinosaurs for the least money or whatever. And in the process of doing this, what I really want to compute is the average change in dinos per dollar. The higher the average change in dinos per dollar, the more dinosaurs I'm getting if I go from a lower price to a higher price. So we can even eyeball some of these numbers. Let's say I'm starting at $10 and I go to 20. Well, I go from three to five dinosaurs. Getting two dinosaurs is good, I guess. But for the exact, whoa, I don't even know how that happened. Let's pretend we didn't see that. For the exact same jump in price, going from 20 to 30, I get three dinosaurs more instead of two dinosaurs more. So going from 20 to 30 is kind of a better deal than going from 10 to 20. And we want a way to make that precise. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this whole uh, average rate O change formula, which says average rate of change is the change in Y values divided by the change in X values. And you'll sometimes see this written as delta Y over delta X. That delta triangle symbol is just a little shorthand thing for the change or the difference. But the formula that you need to know for average rate of change is just that sucker right there. And you guys may or may not remember that from such mathematical endeavors as finding the slope of a line. It's actually the exact same formula. You don't need to know that for right now, but average rate of change is given by that formula. And so let's say that we're trying to find, let me go over here now. Let's say that we're trying to find average rate of change of dinos per dollar from, let's say, x equals 10 to x equals 30. And now, dudes, here's a thing. Whenever you see these homework problems or these test problems that ask you for average rate of change, they're almost always going to give you the x values and make you figure out the rest. So if we go back over here to see what's happening, well, we're asked to find out the average rates of change from 10 to 30. And in fact, we've got those x values sitting right here. So we can figure out the y values just by going straight across on our little table there. And we're going to need those y values because that's what's involved in this whole uh, equation of doom thingy. All right. So we've got 10, 3, and 38. Let's go back over here and fill that out. x equals 10 really means the ordered pair 10, 3. And x equals 30 really means the ordered pair 30, 8. And remember, the 3 and the 8 just came from the y values in the table right over here. All right, so now we've got our two ordered pairs, and we can actually plug this into the formula. So we can say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the formula. 
but here's what we get. y2 is 8, y1 is 3, x2 is 30, and x1 is 10. So this looks like 5 over 20, and if you like, that simplifies to 1 over 4. And so what this is telling me is that for every $1 I spend, whoop, nope, sorry, that's not right. Let's look at this here. For every $4 I spend, on average, I'm getting one extra ballerina dinosaur. But that's the average when I'm specifically going between these two x values, 10 and 30. So I could go between two different x values. I would get possibly a different average change. And uh, if I got a higher average change, then I would probably want to go for those different x values instead. But in the end, all we did here is we were asked to find the average rate of change between two x values. We plug those suckers into the table to find the corresponding y values. And then we plug the x and the y values into the equation and got the final answer, which is 1 over 4. So that's all average rate of change is, people. And the only extra thing you're going to see on that is understanding a certain interpretation of rate of change, which is going to look like this. So let's say I'm a very innocent, well-meaning pedestrian who's driving down the road at, you know, the very reasonable and sane speed of 130 miles an hour. And there's somebody who just really likes, you know, crushing the spirits of those who are having a good time. And this person happens to be equipped with a radar gun. And he's sitting by the side of the highway and zapping people who walk by or drive by. All right. Now, here's the thing. A radar gun can't figure out how fast you're going at any one instant. So what it has to do is use this average velocity formula. And what that formula does is say, well, if you're trying to estimate velocity, then you can take the change in distance over the change in time. So what the radar done, does is it figures out basically where I am at some time. And then it waits for an instant, usually like a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second. And then it figures out where I am that amount of time later. So it measures my position at those two different times. And then it can use that to calculate the change in distance. And then it just divides that by the change in time, because it knows how long that it waited between its two measurements. And it uses that division to approximate my velocity. And in fact, what it gets is exactly my average velocity. So this is an application of average rate of change. It is a fact, an awesome, cold, hard fact, that average rate of change of distance with respect 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 with respect to time that is exactly what we mean by velocity so here's what the upshot of this is if you see a problem on homework or a test that asks you for average velocity then average velocity is just the rate of change formula, but applied to a distance function. It's the change in distance over change in time, which means distance 2 minus distance 1 over time 2 minus time 1. It's exactly the rate of change formula we went over a second ago, but specifically using distance for the y value and time for the x value. All right, so that's pretty cool. Simple topic. No more we got to talk about for that. Let's just do a quick thing on relative rate of change. So here's the idea behind relative rate of change. Maybe I know that um, I'm a speed demon. So now maybe we're talking about um, x equals time and y equals my velocity. Maybe I'm a speed demon. And so I've got a little uh, velocity chart that looks like this. Maybe at time 1, I'm going 50 miles an hour. And time two, I'm going 70 miles an hour. Time three, I'm going 80 miles an hour. Time four, I'm going 100 miles an hour. And time five, I'm going 200 miles an hour. That sounds like fun. And so here's the thing. We could talk about the average rate of change between two points. But we could also talk about the relative rate of change. And here's the idea. The average rate of change really does tell you, like, on average, how much I'm going faster, how much I'm going slower. But the relative rate of change gives you that same idea as a proportion. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the relative rate of change between those two points and between those two points and see what happens. Now, first, the formula. 
rel rate change. That makes sense. The formula for relative rate of change is y2 minus y1 over y1. And this gives you, FYI, a percentage. So the number that this gives you is the percent change, and that percentage is why we call it a relative rate of change. So if you see anything in the homework about uh, give me the relative rate or give me the percent change, then this is the formula you should be using, y2 minus y1 over y1. All right, so let's, um, in blue, because I like blue, it's my favorite, let's in blue figure out the relative rate of change over here. And we're going to need the y values. And the only two things that we need here are the only two y values, 70 and 50. So the relative rate of change between those two points is going to be 70 minus 50 over 50. And that's 20 over 50, which is 2 over 5. And if you want a number for that, that's actually not even approximately equal to. It's exactly equal to 0 0.4. So the, the relative rate of change between x equals 1 and x equals 2 is 0 0.4. And now let's do the same thing over here. And now we're going to go between x equals 4 and x equals 5. So we've got these two y values, 200 and 100. Plug them into the same formula. It's y2 minus y1 all over y1. And that's 100 over 100 which simplifies to exactly 1. And so here's what this is saying. Uh, my relative rate of change from 1 to 2 was 0.4, and that means that I went faster by 40%. But between 4 and 5, I went faster by a factor of 1, which is 100%. So in the first place, I went 40% faster. In the second place, I went 100% faster. So the relative rates of change are simple numbers you can use to understand exactly how much you've changed. Uh, and it's all in terms of percentages, so sometimes that makes life a lot easier. All right, guys, that's it for now. Catch you on the flip side.